This is a public service announcement. Production versions of the Tailfin frame pack are now available. If you've been watching my videos over the last couple of years, you'll know firstly that I am supported by Tailfin. I'm part of their R&D division. And you'll also know that I've been running prototype frame packs. And uh, it's one of the things I've had the most questions about on my bike checks and things like that. Um, so I thought I'd just uh, run through the, the production bags because they're actually really cool. There's some really cool features on there. And I've had a bit of a, an, an input into the, the design and the development. Um, so I'll run you through the bags now and then I'm going to head home and show you some of the prototypes and show you the kind of process that's involved in, in bringing these kind of products to market um, from a rider perspective. So these, these new frame bags from Tailfin, they come in two types. They're predominantly designed for road and gravel bikes. As you can see, I've got mine on my Mason Boca. Um, this is a, a size XL, uh, 60 centimeter, just for reference and sizing. Um, and there's two types. There's the, the wedge, which is this. Uh, this is the larger kind of wedge bag, which basically is designed to sort of be in the front of the frame and sit halfway or, you know, three quarters of the way down the top tube. And then there's the more traditional half frame pack, which will fill the whole gap here. Now I've been running some half frame packs in development um, on various bikes and um, yeah, it's all kind of helped feed into, into these, these final designs. Now the cool thing about the packs is there's nine different sizes. So in theory, you should be able to find a pack that fits your bike perfectly. Uh, and it caters down to the smaller frame sizes as well. There's actually a, um, a frame sizing guide on the, on the Telfin website. You can put your bike in and then it gives you a few options as, as to what will fit. So hopefully you should be able to get a nice snug fit. Now, one of the, the, the standout features of the tail fin packs, it's not just the frame packs, but you'll, you know from, if you've got a top tube pack or like the fork bags, is the V-mounts and the rubber straps. Velcro straps are a thing of the past now. They hold it super tight onto the frame. There's no rubbing. Since I've been running tail fin, I've not worn any paint off my bikes. In the past, I've had to have frames resprayed because I've just destroyed it with, with bags rubbing and the Velcro straps rubbing. But yeah, that's kind of eliminated the problem with, with the, the V-mount straps. As already mentioned, this is the largest of the wedge sizes. Just to give you a bit of a reference, this is, this is the things I have in here. Uh, so I'm out for a bit of a gravel ride. Obviously spring in the UK, conditions are very changeable. Um, so what I've got, I've got an Albion folding gilet. I've got one of the lightweight Albion insulate jackets and uh, Albion rain jacket. And all of that fits in quite comfortably. Um, also got a tube in there. Uh, for like repairs in case I have a puncture, set of over gloves, um, and there's still plenty of room in there as well. The other really cool feature, I don't know if you can quite see it, is that uh, there's little Velcro straps to hold your pump. So the pump is attached to the top of the bag and doesn't rattle around. Now there's been a lot of work on some of the smaller details, uh, zips being a prime example of these. So I've had various different uh, zip types on the, on the prototypes I've had over the last couple of years. Uh, and they finally settled on this one. Um, I think it's pretty much gone full circle. You know, a zip is a zip, but they've, they've basically gone for the really nice sort of reliable one. Now the other cool thing about these bags, uh, which is relatively unique, is the, the internal structure. So there's an internal structure on the top, which, which holds the, um, you know, like the, frame in, the, the bag in place in the frame. And there's also, you can just about see down here is the, it's basically a strip of carbon and that stops the bag bulging out so you, so when you're riding along it doesn't you know you don't get too much in the way of knee rub um, and also it takes quite a bit of pressure off the zip so when you as you inevitably do overpack your bag um, you're not as likely to to burst a zip um, and I've not broken a zip so far with all the prototypes I've used and obviously the design's got more and more refined you know as it's got closer to production so yeah really nice feature um, and you know really really useful there is also a well, let's call it a mat pocket on the on the non-drive side of the frame bag. Really useful um, just to put things you need to sort of hand. So I recently used this, um, I was guiding in the Canary Islands, had this on my road bike, had my passport and things in there, no problem. Today I've just got a multi-tool um, and my Dyna plug. Um, so yeah, I just like to keep things in here, which you know, you're, you're gonna need sort of fairly regularly and you don't wanna be digging around in the main pack to find. So yeah, that's the, uh, the mat pocket. Another little feature, there is actually a little port here, so you can use that for a camelback hose um, or dynamo wiring, depending on, you know, what, you, what your need is. Um, so that just sits on the front there um, and then is, is held away from the frame by the, the lower V-mount. Um, so yeah, makes things nice and neat. So that's the details of the new frame packs. I'm just heading home now. And uh, once I get back into my garage, I'll dig out some of the prototypes uh, and then you can see kind of how the, um, the development process has worked. So here we are back home in the garage after the ride and I'm just going to show you some of the prototype bags uh, that I've been testing over the years and these have all gone to inform the production stuff. So yeah, hopefully it's kind of interesting to see, see how these things come to fruition. 
So I first started on the Tailfin R&D team. It was probably tail end of 2021 into the 2022 season. Um, and 2022, one of my big goals was Tour Divide. Um, so I wrote it on, on this Mason in search of behind me. And the um, so the first bag we made um, was with, with that in mind. So it's custom bag to fit that frame. And this is it here. Um, so this was one of the very, very, very first frame bags that that Tailfin made. And it's kind of, um, it's not anything special. It's, it's a bit rough around the edges as you know, you'd expect from any early prototype. And yeah, it's, it's fairly basic. I guess the main feature about these was, this is one of the first bags to have the V-mounts on. Um, so, the, so the early testing was just making sure that the, the V-mounts work well, which they did. Um, they weren't even released on any other products at that time. And also there was a lot of, um, like zip, zip pullers seemed to be a big focus early on for some reason, probably not the, the most important thing, but um, as you can see, I've got like three, three different types of zip puller on there. Um, so yeah, all of that kind of feedback kind of went into, um, you know, future generations. Um, these, these zips, these were waterproof zips. I didn't have any issues with them. Um, obviously I'm not the only rider on the R and D division. Um, so there were a few kind of issues with early zips and, um, you know, all that's sort of fed back into creating the product. So yeah, that is the, the frame pack number one. So the next iteration of frame pack uh, was this one here. Now this is the one I actually did take on the Tour Divide in 2022. Unfortunately, that race didn't go too well for me. I'm pretty certain I had COVID on the flight. So uh, I got a week in and um, couldn't breathe at altitude. So I ended up scratching. Um, but even so, this this bag, um, I, did, I mean, did half a divide in my prep races. Um, and I've used it, I used it on my ISO. Um, because it's, it's a custom fit for it. Um, you know, and it's, it's done a lot of mileage and it's, it's really held up well. So the next sort of uh, evolution from that original prototype, you can see now that the, the carbon struts, which you see in the production bags, they've started to get introduced. And this was a bit of a game changer. As I said earlier in the video, it just helps kind of keep the, the pack from bulging out too much, especially when you have a pack it. It's, it's very common when you're on a bike packing trip. You just, you know, keep pushing your luck with, with stuff in your bag. And I've, I've split numerous zips on, um, on other brands, um, not yet done so on Tailfin, which is encouraging. So yeah, that's started to be introduced. And also you can see the, the top is now got the um, some structure in it. It's not the frame that is found in the production ones. Uh, that came with the later, later prototype. Um, but it's kind of a one piece section in there and you can see the, the V-mounts are still in there. Again, these are early ones. Uh, the newer ones have a bit more kind of forward and backwards movement. So actually you can pair them up with uh, top tube bags really easily and use the same straps. Um, and you can see evolution of zips as well. So we're starting to look a little bit closer to the, um, the production ones now with the zip, zip puller. I mean, these are rough 3D printed models, um, but you know, I've used that extensively when it's two o'clock in the morning and you're pulling on your zip. Um, you, you, you kind of really get to test them and, and see if they really work well. So yeah, so that was the, the second generation of uh, frame bag. The other thing that started to get introduced on this generation was the hydration and dynamo cable port on the front there. Um, now it's not something I, I tend to use, um, but you know, a lot of riders do. So this was the, you know, the stage at which that started getting developed as well. Um, so yeah, kind of gradually morphing into the product that is, is launched today. Now it is worth noting that uh, you see a lot of R&D riders riding these, these white bags. Uh, so this Dyneema, um, the production bag isn't Dyneema. Um, but yeah, for some reason we, we get the nice fancy stuff. So all of this stuff is made down in Bristol. Um, so they, they custom make the stuff in house. I visit probably two or three times a year. It's really good to sort of chat to the product team, feedback, take all my bags down there, um, show them, you know, what condition they're in. Normally there's nothing really to report. Uh, they're holding up pretty well. Um, and also I kind of empty my brain of weird ideas. Um, which kind of then gets fed back in. And there's loads of really cool stuff that I've, I've kind of been testing and, and working on, as, you know, as well as the other R&D riders. So um, yeah, it's really cool to kind of actually be part of something and then, then see something go through the whole process uh, to production, which is kind of the reason I wanted to show it in this video. So this is the third step in the evolution. And this is actually a frame bag I've used a hell of a lot. Um, so it fits my, my gravel bike that I showed you earlier, my road bike. Um, so I've used this uh, on the road bike for like Japanese Odyssey. I've done a race around Rwanda on the gravel bike, various kind of big one day trips on the gravel bike. Um, so this has had a hell of a lot of use and it's it stood up really well. And as you can see, we're looking, you know, closer towards the shapes that, that you can see in the half frame bags. Um, obviously this is 
custom, but um, the you know all the frames kind of are measured up and um, go into the database so that Tailfin can kind of tailor the, the, the frame or the, the, the sizes of bags to match people's frames. So as you can see, it's got all the features and, and they're kind of in, in more of production positions now. Got the port on the front there, got the carbon in the on the inside, um, more of an exoskeleton in the top. Uh, so that's kind of saving a little bit of weight, but keeping it rigid. Um, still on the original um, V mounts. Uh, these, these like the the latest version, do have a bit more slide room, uh, as I mentioned before. There is a different zip puller on there, um, but I think by this point it's settled on the the production one that we have now. Um, so yeah, really durable. Again, the the fancy white Dyneema. Obviously, production is going to be black. But yeah, really cool. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting onto the production bags for all my stuff. Uh, now, as I said earlier, the the bags that are in production at the moment are predominantly road and gravel. But you may have noticed some of these mountain bike style bags on um, various bikes. So this is the one I've used for Highland Trail, Silk Road. Uh, I've just did Atlas Mountain Race on it. Um, so this is custom for my Mason frames. And um, at the moment, there there isn't um, well. There isn't mountain bike ones specifically available. However, what would I say on that is watch this space, but there are kind of more features now uh, on this bag that are now on the production bags. So you can see here, we've got the um, sort of production, or well, uh, certainly prototypes of the production V mounts now with that extra slide room on there. The zip toggles are getting closer and closer, closer to production. And basically the whole process has been refined. Um, so this would have been about after sort of 18 months of prototypes. Um, and it's, you know, it's a really nice, really nice bag. Um, you know, the events I've done on it, um, you know, it's, it's still in really good nick. Obviously it looks a bit dirty with the white fabric, um, but you wouldn't see that on the black stuff. So yeah, really pleased with it. And um, yeah, happy to, Happy to be running the Tailfin stuff. So there we have it. That is the new Tailfin bags. Um, check out the Tailfin website for the information and the pricing and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was informative. Um, just giving you an insight into, into how these things are made. And yeah, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.